Well, fall is on its way, and if you are looking for a project to do in your home that can bring some of that fall flavor, the fall colors into your home, kind of dress it up for the season, new table linens is the way to go. Telling me you don't have a sewing machine? Doesn't matter. We're going to do these things in a no-sew fashion. In other words, you don't have to have a sewing machine. Those of you that sew, you know how to do this, and you can easily use the sewing machine, but we're going to iron everything together today. What I'm going to do is I brought some fabric from the other side of the room. This is kind of a dining room, living room combination. This is the sofa. And as you can see, it, it certainly can be summer and spring colors, but there are some of those deeper fall and winter colors in here as well. And I just kind of played off of this when I selected a couple of the fabrics I'm going to work with today. I'm going to show you that we can make napkins very easily. This is probably the easiest project of all. Napkins are generally oh, 20 inches square, let's say, and you need to add a half inch all the way around to make these hems. So basically you add an inch. So you need to cut your fabric 21 inches by 21 inches, and then you use this iron-on adhesive, any brand that you like, but I will tell you what. This is the first time I used steam a seam and I love this stuff. I'm going to show you how it works in a little bit. And it comes in a variety of different widths, so you get what you need. When you're working with a napkin, you need a quarter inch. When we do the tablecloths, however, we're going to need the half inch. So napkins, you can whip up hundreds of napkins right here at the ironing board. This tablecloth is a round one, and eventually here I'll show it to you on the table. This one is the trickiest because you have to create the circle, obviously, and I will show you how to do that. And then last here we have a square one where, of course, we're matching patterns and everything, but you can see how nice the seam looks. In fact, maybe you can't even see it because it almost disappears. Now, this is the way we put this thing together, and I'm going to do this in kind of mini form, but I'll tell you what, if you don't understand exactly how I'm putting it together here, I have a project sheet over in the sewing section so you can find that there. Basically, when you're putting a tablecloth together, your table is probably wider than the initial panel of fabric. You know, it comes about 44, 45 inches wide. So you need two panels to create your tablecloth. The first panel, and then the second one, more often than not, you cut this in half. So we'll just take our little second panel here and cut it in half so you get the idea. One half I am going to attach to this side of my main panel. The other half then attaches to this side so that I can get the amount of width that I need to cover the table. So we'll set this one aside. Here we want to match up our patterns. And as you can see, we have a green stripe and then a triple. Green stripe, stripe excuse me, and a triple. Then we need another green stripe, which is this one here. So basically, I'm going to kind of fold this over, keeping my brown stripe on because I'm going to then attach this right here so my pattern works out nicely. To do this, I have that folded pretty well. I'm going to take my iron and run over it a little bit just to hold it down. This is where the iron comes in handy. A little steam maybe will help it along a bit. And then get my um, steam -a seam ready. Can you see that this has a paper backing, basically? And when you pull this away, you have kind of a little honeycomb. This is sticky here. You can almost see through it. This is basically all adhesive. Now what I'm going to do is pull a little strip off of here. I'm going to line up my fabric right where I want it. And I take the sticky part put it underneath here and I stick it to one side of my fabric. I, I like to do it to the side that I'm holding on to. Then I set my piece in place. See how nicely that lines up? And you follow the manufacturer's instructions, but basically you hold the iron here for about eight seconds. Many people suggest that you don't use steam, so you have to have it just on the right setting. And then you count off the eight seconds and think about it. Or you can start pulling the uh, paper off the adhesive, which I can easily do here. And if this breaks, don't worry about it. You just pick it right up and patch it in. See how I stick it along the back there again? Lay it in place and set my iron on. 
And the next time I will show you how nicely the seam stays together. See that? Can't pull that thing apart. Once I go all the way down the seam, which I won't do right now, just for speed for you, I go to the back and then I iron the back side down as well. I really want to make sure that this stays in place. And then all I need to do is pretend that this is one large napkin and I use my quarter inch steam a seam and go the quarter inch hem all the way around. To make a circle, I'll show you really quickly. Pretend we have my other side on here. You're basically making a square first. Then you take your fabric before you hem it, obviously, because we're trying to cut a circle. Fold it in half. Fold it in half the opposite way. And then you take this corner that you have here. You get your measuring tape out. You know the diameter that you want for your tablecloth. You put the point right, the point of the tape right at the point of the fabric. And how big do we have? I'm doing a little cheat sheet. Okay, let's say we're making it seven and a half inches. You take your tape and mark seven and a half inches. Go back to the corner, mark seven and a half inches. Back to the corner. And you continue to do this until you have that whole quarter of the fabric marked. Seven and a half. Maybe I'll do two more here. That'll help me with my circle. And right, oh, I came right to the edge. I got lucky, didn't I? Just made it. And take your scissors. It always ends up like a miracle to me. Cut along your markings. And voila, we have our circle made. All we have to do is go all the way around with that quarter inch uh, steam seam and create the hem. So you've got the basics. Go take a look at the project sheet. And I'm going to set the table up a couple different ways so you can see how beautiful these new table linens look. There we go. Perfect centerpiece for September. Basically because there's apples, we have the pears, just the little touch of the small mums coming in, and of course grapes, perfect for this time of the year. Lovely, lovely centerpiece. Easy to make too if you want to. Get a basket. Um, you know, there's some of the green foam in the center there, hot glued in, and just start hot gluing some of your um, fruits and stick in your mums. Very, very easy to do just as easy as our lovely no sew tablecloth and how pretty the plates and gorgeous brown napkins look a very dressy table but nice for your family for dinner time september early october this would be lovely and as you know easy to do um, let's pull these things apart and we're going to take a look at the round tablecloth see what we can do with that one Well, here we have the round tablecloth. Um, this one is my favorite, I think, because the colors, the brown and the green, are so pretty together. I like the pattern, a little bit dressier than the plaid. Um, I would have guests over and probably use this tablecloth. Same green plates, same silverware, same pretty brown napkins that pick up the pretty brown in the tablecloth. Only this time, you know how we always say it's the details that make the difference? Well, I was trying a variety of different details. For instance, on this napkin, I'm using a beaded napkin ring. This can be made simply by using elastic and slipping beads on it or even wire. This one doesn't stretch. This is wire. So as long as you make it the right size, you can see it doesn't have to be that big. Um, you can make your own napkin rings. Lovely, subtle. This one is kind of pretty. This one is purchased. Um, little tiny beads create a lovely, kind of bulky, a um, little bit rougher, more textural napkin ring, but kind of pretty, stands out a bit on the, the plate. Now I know you can do this one. All I've done is taken one of those sprigs that you get at the store that has a little bit of beads, some leaves, very pretty little pine cones on here, just bent the wire around my napkin. 
easy to do, looks really pretty, dresses up the table perfect for the fall. And last but not least, maybe this is the easiest one of all, find a pretty ribbon that you like, and I especially like the type that are wired because you can kind of bend them and form them and make them look kind of pretty, um, and tie a ribbon around your napkin. I generally set these on the plate then because they become almost like a little centerpiece to the plate themselves. So uh, four different occasions here and I have a little bit different look. You might notice I used the same um, centerpiece that was here originally. This is not very fall looking, however I like the white with the simple two colors and um, I think the leaves and the bulb and everything really pick up the shades in the tablecloth so I thought it could still work. Now the only thing I think that could make this better would be to change out the seat covers. And I have a good friend who is wonderful with fabric and staple guns and tools and stuff like that. His name's Matt. <laughs> and I'm going to see if I can get him to put that plaid fabric on the chairs. What do you think? Ever notice when it comes down to the actual hard part of decorating, Sherry calls on me. Have you noticed that? Well, I certainly have. I've made note of it too. And I have to admit, I haven't probably used a slotted handheld screwdriver probably, well, a long time because I'm used to using one of these guys, a cordless drill, but I forgot the right type of bit to remove these seats, so I was stuck using this driver, but it really actually is very simple. Usually these seats only have about four screws in it. I went around, removed the screws, and all I need to do now is pop this out, and I'm ready to cover it with new fabric. Now I went ahead and I cut the fabric to the size that I needed, and I'm just going to place my cushion on top here, but I want to make sure that I have enough fabric all the way around so that I can cover this seat cushion so that all edges are covered with new fabric. Also, I want to make sure that I line it up so that I have the stripes exactly where I want them. And especially if you do have stripes, you want to make sure that everything's even on both sides. So once you've done that, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to start stapling, but I'm going to start on the sides. And when I do start stapling, I want to staple in the middle and then the two ends and then start to make sure that this is all lined up properly. Now the staple gun that I have, this electric staple gun, I'm using 5 16th staples, anything too large, and it won't push down into the fabric or the board, the backing board of this um, seat cover. Now, the first thing I want to do is put my first staple in, and you really want to push down so it drives the staple down into the fabric and into the board. Give it a little tug, make sure the fabric's taut, staple it again. I just double shot there, I'm going to have to remove that. Come down here and do that and so forth. And then I'd fill this in with all my staples and then I would just fold this side over, give it a little bit of a pull so that I pull it taut underneath and then start stapling all the way around. And then I would work on my front and then I'd work on my back and then all I'd have to do then is take it and put it back on my seat and put the four screws back and I'm all done. But being that I have, well, three more chairs to do, I'm going to be here for quite a while, so why don't you folks take a little break and uh, check me later. Just much, much later. <laughs> that looks fantastic. Many, many thanks to Matt. The new seat covers look wonderful with the tablecloth. Remember the fabric from the other side of the room. Um, they're fresh and new. These seat covers are going to last them for several years now. They can dirty them up and then we'll cover them again. That's what's so great about these easy to remove and easy to replace seat covers. Well, let me pull this in. And I think we've done pretty good with our no-sew dining room ensemble, don't you?